let's talk about a couple other challenges. Challenge number two for managers is managing for diversity. Managing workforce diversity is a growing challenge for managers all over. Historically, diversity in the U.S. has been thought of in terms of race, but workforce diversity today encompasses a far greater range of factors, including those such as age, sexual orientation, gender, physical characteristics, ethnicity, stuff like that. So just consider a few trends in the U.S. labor workforce. The baby boomers now are growing older, and the workforce is graying with them. Uh, our Hispanic culture is currently representing approximately 15% of the U.S. workforce now, and that percentage is expected to grow, reflecting all population trends. Women now compromise almost half of the total U.S. workforce, and women earn 60% of undergraduate and graduate degrees. What does this all mean to those of us as managers? Certainly managers need to be aware of differences between employers and be prepared to deal with miscommunication, insensitivity, or hostility in the workforce. But managing diversity is more than just acknowledging differences in people. It's also recognizing that the value of those differences play an important key in reaching our organizational goals. People from different age groups, genders, cultures, and life experiences bring new and valuable perspectives to the embodiment of an organization. The next challenge in management is for managing for globalization. It wasn't long ago that businesses only were competitive on a domestic basis. There's always been international trade, of course, since the day of Magellan and Columbus and all those travelers, but over the last few decades we've seen both a qualitative and quantitative change in international commerce, and the global nature of business today generates intense international competition. One key reason for this change is the strong demand for coming from our consumers and businesses overseas. Companies that want to grow often need to tap international markets where incomes are rising and demand is increasing. And it's not just the big conglomerates like GE, Microsoft, Motorola, those type companies that are participating in global environment. The internet has been called the great equalizer in business because even the smallest of businesses can create inexpensive websites where they can sell goods worldwide just using the old interweb. Globalization can mean increased profits for a business, but it can be a very challenging task for managers. Expanding markets means hiring more people, sometimes in different countries with those different language barriers, different norms, and the way that business is conducted in those countries. Not only does this present logistical challenge, but not all managerial styles translate well, either literally or figuratively, on a global level. So managers need to adapt their skills to different cultures and norms while staying true to the core values of the organization and its goals. Let's take a look at this question here. John wants his salespeople to use iPhones to improve their sales of the business. Which challenge is he trying to manage? Diversity, information technology, competitive advantage, or globalization? Obviously, the choice is B, and that leads us into our next challenge, which is managing for information technology. The Internet is the global network of independently operating but interconnected commuters, linking hundreds of thousands of smaller networks around the world. Now, the Internet's impact is only one of the ways that technology is important in the ever-challenging business world. New technologies have been injected into the workplace at an exponentially increasing rate over our last few decades, and this is both a blessing and a curse to businesses. Information technology makes seemingly limitless amounts of information now available to managers to aid them in decision-making. Problem becomes the amount of this data can be overwhelming to even the best of managers. Today's supercharged information technology-based economy also makes job-related knowledge and workplace skills obsolete faster than ever before, and this means a concerted effort on the part of the company to invest in ongoing training and development. And one of these is e-commerce, or electronic commerce, which is the buying and selling of services over computer networks, and it is truly reshaping industries. IT, or information technology, has made possible e-business using the internet to facilitate every aspect of running a business. Now, by 2015, consumers are projected to spend $1.4 trillion online, a rise of 13.5% annually. IT has facilitated e-business using the internet, so more and more businesses are saying, hey, there's a lot of money out there to be made 
if I can make my business out there virtually online and over the internet you know whether it's uh, logistics or services or even just sharing of information the technology is there and managers are having to find a way to grasp hold of that technology to make sure that the competitive advantage is still there and that the business continues to exist and stay competitive a plus to this too is that new technology developments have also opened a door for opportunities for companies and employees willing to explore those non-traditional work arrangements more organizations are allowing employees to work from home at least occasionally but telecommuting presents its own set of management challenges in terms of performance monitoring schedule maintenance and managerial con control so there's the pros and cons of that so in this new world of e-business our new 21st century managers need to understand and use different parts such as uh, far-ranging e-management and e-communication tools including email which we always we all use uh, in the business world it can be very critical or text messaging you know with customers with coworkers and documents transmitted over computer network which you know at some point raises some security security concerns uh, we have project management software available to us which are just programs for planning and scheduling both people costs and resources to complete a project on time and you might have worked with some of these or seen them such as uh, Microsoft Project another use is accelerated accelerated decision making conflict and stress the internet connects us to huge interconnected databases computerized collections of interrelated files and the pace and quality of management are affected increasing stress and conflict of our workers the changes in the organizational structures jobs goal setting and knowledge management is also one of those pieces of business we need to understand as managers uh, organizations and teams have become virtual they're no longer bound by time zones or locations and meetings can be conducted via teleconferencing or video conferencing using video and audio links along with computers to let people in different locations see hear, and talk with one another such as Skype go to meeting such uh, such a software and websites that you might have used previously or at least have heard of another thing we as managers need to be aware of is collaborative computing which is just using computer software and hardware to allow people to work better together collaboratively managing employees will also need to be much more flexible through knowledge management which is the implementation of systems and practices to increase the sharing of knowledge and information throughout an organization so the better we get a hold on that the more efficient and effective we can be through that knowledge management now we will look at all these challenges later on throughout the book but next I want to talk about challenge number five which is managing for ethical standards now many if not most managers will eventually face an ethical or moral dilemma in the workplace production manager can cut costs dramatically on the factory floor if he uses substandard components in the manufacturing process another example is a purchasing manager is offered season tickets to the football game if she grants a lucrative contract to a supplier the bottom line of all this is at the most basic level business ethics is simply knowing right from wrong and choosing to do the right thing managers in an organization set the tone for ethical behavior and as they set that tone it trickles you have that trickle effect to all the employees employees take their cues from managers regarding the behaviors that are acceptable or not acceptable in an organization based on how they see managers acting and behaving in the workforce and and how they're rewarded in the organization businesses led by managers who conduct themselves in an ethical manner and who reward employees for doing what is right are much more likely to have a positive ethical culture and then that spreads out throughout their communities as well and how they conduct themselves outside of the organization okay now we'll take a look at our next challenge which is challenge six which is over managing for sustainability now, as we all know the environment has now become a uh, stronger area of focus and that we need to be as a business more sensitive not only to the needs of our customers but also the needs of the environment as a whole now sustainability is defined as economic development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs 
Sometimes we refer to this as doing well by doing good. Sustainable principles were once the views espoused primarily by environmentalists and organizations like Greenpeace. However, the past few decades, there has been a great widespread acceptance among many business leaders that sustainable environmental practices are important in terms of new product development, reputation building, and overall general corporate strategy. And businesses now get looked at on how green of a business they are when other companies are wanting to do businesses with them or even general consumers wanting to do business with a company okay is that product green enough how is that company uh, helping the environment so that's just an, another challenge that we as managers have to look at in our companies are hey um, our sustainability now let's go ahead and look at challenge number seven which is managing for your own happiness and life goals Now, not everyone finds being a manager fulfilling and sometimes others feel that management is a great job if you truly like people and enjoy mentoring. At the end of the day, you just have to figure out what makes you happy. Some people don't find management fulfilling at all and because they dislike meetings or the handling of immediate important problems, they like to not have that type of pressure or the accountability that comes along with that role. Another aspect people don't like for their own happiness is they don't like the long hours. Uh, they're no longer able to just put in eight hours, clock out at the end of the day, forget about work and go home. So for those people, the bump in pay to be a manager may not be worth the aggravation that comes along with that increased salary. Now if you look at the other side of that coin, you may find that management is just what, what you enjoy, what fulfills you. You take the joy in seeing your plans take shape and achieving and perhaps even exceeding goals that you've established for yourself as well as your boss or company has set for you as well as watching your staff achieve levels of performance that you never thought possible but because of the management skills and and the works in place that has created a happiness for you and in continuing with that you know as a, a financier Aga Hassan Abdeh said that the conventional definition of management is getting work done through people but real management is developing people through your work so that's just uh, something to take to mind that um, getting that fulfillment and happiness for being a manager is possible as well through the work that you do that the people do that you are leading all right so now we're going to move on to the next section which is over what managers do the four principal functions what you actually do as a manager as I mentioned previously there are four basic functions as a manager to achieve the goals of organization you perform the management process managers perform the management process known also as the four management functions and those once again are planning organizing leading and controlling all of these functions affect each other they're always ongoing and are performed simultaneously so let's take a look at the first one planning and we will be discussing this later in part three of our text but planning is defined as the setting goals and deciding how to achieve those goals that you've set Organizing, which we will be discussing in part four in our book, is defined as arranging tasks, people, and other resources to accomplish the work. So getting everything in line that you have available to you in using those resources. Leading. Now sometimes you'll hear the term leader and manager used simultaneously. There is a difference between leading and managing. So we're going to find leading as motivating, directing, and otherwise influencing people to work hard to achieve the organizational goals. And then our last function is called controlling. This, we will be discussing this in part six of our text. Controlling we define as monitoring performance, comparing it with goals, and taking corrective actions as needed. And once again, I just want to emphasize that these functions do affect each other and you can see how they're in an arrow going to each of them and like a circular pattern because they are performed simultaneously and each one of them 
is dependent on the other. Okay, let's take a look at another question for you to think about and how it relates to the information here in the chapter. Laura runs a sales and expense report at the end of each workday. Which management function is she performing? Is it leading, organizing, controlling, or planning? And the correct answer is C, controlling. And if you go back to how I just defined controlling, it is a way of monitoring performance, comparing it with goals, and taking corrective action as need. Running a sales report and expense report at the end of each day. She's monitoring their performance and she will be comparing that with goals. So if you chose the answer C, good job everyone.